everybody and welcome. My name is Kirsten Winkler of KirstenWinkler.com and uh, today I got questions for Shah Yula and uh, he is one of the two founders of the Grey Matter Foundation. So Shah, welcome to questions. Um, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, I don't want to insist too much on this age thing, uh, to be honest. Uh, however, as we don't use um, a webcam today and only have audio, uh, so you and your co-founder, you are basically um, 17 years, o uh, years old, and um, I was wondering um, if we shouldn't get started with uh, maybe the initial motivation behind um, your idea um, of founding Grey Meta foundation and what was the situation like that you said as a high schooler mm, I would uh, really like to do this and um, not uh, do maybe what um, yeah other typical things you do when you're still in school uh, sure um, so Jeremy and I were actually friends uh, a year prior to to um to gray matter but it was it was really gray matter that kind of brought us together um i had met him on the fencing team um early sophomore year and at the time um it really wasn't you know anything you know gray matter related wasn't on our mind but a year later um as we were you know applying for ap's and um you know classes were getting more difficult and our school was just kind of being you know putting a lot of pressure on us uh we had heard some buzz around school and from our school officials that um our school and the New York City school public system was going to undergo some really heavy budget cuts. Mm -hmm. um, I believe the number was around $750 million. And our school was a pretty competitive school, and so a lot of, a lot of kids were, were panicking. Mm -hmm. And everyone had kind of their own answer, but I would say a majority of our class went, you know, the political route and tried to sign petitions and went rallying and, and, and tried doing a lot of things. Um, Jeremy and I tried to focus on a different, a different aspect to uh, fix this problem that was kind of affecting everyone. And one day we kind of decided to uh, just, I mean, we, we were already kind of close friends. So uh, one day I just went over to Jeremy's house and we were kind of throwing ideas at each other. And we thought, hey, maybe if, maybe if the school didn't have to spend so much money on, you know, extracurricular activities, they could, you know, keep spending money on classes. And that was a really premature idea. And we thought, hey, maybe we can create uh, some sort of, you know, charity that could, uh, you know, help fund, you know, some of the clubs or some of the some of mm -hmm. the after school activities. And then maybe we can keep an, keep another AP class. And of course, that was kind of the very very you know vague idea of what Gray Matter would evolve into in the months after, because uh, Jeremy and I got together and we started drafting ideas and letting our friends know and letting our family know, and then it kind of snowballed into what it is today. Great. So. Um did you have uh, sort of uh, help from the teacher side or from another pro professional side um, already experienced in this uh, sort of charity or establishing a foundation? Or was it really Jeremy um, and Yusha uh, sitting down and uh, coding and then making connections and building relationships? Um, actually, it really was, um, I mean, I'm proud to say, mostly Jeremy and I that, that thought of, you know, a lot of our ideas. Um, in the very beginning, it was, it was just, I actually can remember, it was almost exactly a year ago, and I was sitting in a physics class, and I was sitting with my friend Zoe, and, you know, we were just talking about these budget cuts, and um, I kind of just thought, hey, you know, I, just that, I, that initial idea just came to my head, and I brought it to Jeremy, and, you know, we kind of just kept talking about it. And I guess, you know, and you know, and we were kind of reflecting on this just a couple of weeks ago, and I guess my real influences were my parents, mm -hmm. because they're both public school city teachers, mm -hmm. and my, my older brother is a technology entrepreneur, so I mean, I guess somewhere passively in the back of my mind they helped, but, you know, all of the, you know, explicit work involved was really Jeremy and I from, from the get-go. Great. And uh, so uh, you you touched on the topic already. Um, for the moment, you concentrate on New York City public schools, and can you describe um, what uh, the project 
um, or the foundation to be put it, uh, yeah, to be put better, probably um, essentially does. Sure. Um, well, right now we're available to, like you said, every New York City public school student. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we allow students to to post projects on our website. Um, as of right now, we we filter all the projects that get posted, but. Um, we give students the ability to to ask for certain materials or um, certain you know uh, project needs uh, that they normally you know might not be able to afford that their teachers might not be able to help them get, and we we kind of set up a little micro donation platform for them on our website. Mm -hmm. So you know if some student needs um, a, you know a couple of hundred dollars for you know a physics project or if another student needs you know just maybe fifty dollars for a textbook. Um, he or she can go on our website and post it down, and individual donors will be able to donate. Mm -hmm. The only thing is that because we, we target public school students, uh, we don't necessarily know um, a lot about them. So, you know, what we try and do is we try and filter it through um, through teacher support. We, we try and contact all the teachers involved behind the students, and after that, we ask that the student donate their materials um, at, back to their school. Oh, okay. So, it, so that way, it's not just these students getting, you know, getting free things, you mm -hmm. know, and, and and hopefully it would allow for uh, some more integrity in, you know, in the operation. And we're hoping that um, everything will go smoothly down down the line. Okay. Um, from the timeline, um, you said it's more or less exactly uh, a year ago now. And um, when uh, were the first projects uh, posted? And uh, can you maybe share with us, um, have you accomplished one, two, or five projects already? Um, so uh, for our audience, um, what do they have to imagine as um, the size and uh, how much is the idea spreading now? Sure. Um, well, actually, since our very beginning, um, we knew that you know we'd want a website and we'd have to start developing it. Um, we did not, we did not really have much support. In the beginning, it was Jeremy and I practicing our, you know, our computer skills by ourselves, and we were just picking up HTML and and just page really. But actually, it wasn't until a month or so ago, maybe two months ago, mm -hmm. that Jeremy. Um, uh, had actually figured out how to, you know, make make the platform what it is right now. Um, it's not ultra advanced yet, but um, on our website, uh, graymatterfdn.org/projects, um, you can see an index of students that have asked for materials. Um, right now, we've had five students ask for um, individual projects. Uh, four of them, which have been completely funded, and one student who is, we call a project leader has asked for materials that she would supply to her whole class, and that project has been funded as well. And all of the pictures are available um, on our website of, you know, how the students spent their money, what they spent it on. Um, and, yeah, we, ha we try and keep a log of, of, all, our, of all our successes. Hmm. That's uh, some pretty, pretty impressive and nice success stories, so congratulations on that. And um, did you... Uh, how how does it basically happen happening because um it it is still you two guys and um is it more or less your personal relationships uh or do some supporters spread the word now is it really only the website um how did you get how do you get traction? How do you find, on the one hand, your your projects, of course, on the other hand, um, the people who might want to donate something and support a project? Hmm. Well, our, our first five projects, you know, like you said, we wanted to ensure integrity, so we actually went and looked personally for for people. Um, in our schools or in our neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So all of these people are, are pretty familiar to us just because we wanted to make sure that the operation process was kept, uh, you know, kept um, secure and it wasn't exploited from the very beginning. We wanted to make sure these these initial stories were, were successful for everyone involved. Yeah. So those few people we reached out to and, you know, we tried and got a hold of. Um, down the line, we expect that, you know, through word of mouth and through just uh, success stories, um, mm -hmm. we will 
we can attract other students to to our website. Yeah, and um, hopefully our little interview can can do its uh, its small part uh, in your success <laughs> story as well. Um, oh, I hope so. <laughs> do you get any help or support um, from? education institutions or from the administrative side or is it really we could put it maybe 100% entrepreneurial hmm. well I mean in the very beginning we had you know we spoke to our teachers about this Jeremy and I back in our old school and you know we got mixed we got mixed results um, you know as our feedback Uh, I say, you know, a good percentage of our teachers were very, were very supportive, mm -hmm. um, and I would say another another fraction of our teachers were possibly kind of skeptic about the idea um, mm -hmm. in the long run. And either way, I would say that we had a decent amount of support, just you know, uh, you know, support from our teachers. You know, I don't think any of them really helped outright, but we did definitely have, um, you know, adults help us for for a while now. Um, I have. You know, since I've come to the Culver Academies, I've met a good friend of mine, uh, Jake Feldman, who's listed as our uh, vice president mm -hmm. on, on our website. Um, his mother, uh, Marsha Rawls, has been helping helping us very much with establishing, um, you know, right connections that we might need. Mm -hmm. For example, um, she introduced us to... ...months, um, get, our, get our legal status uh, to where we want it to be. And she's also introduced us to um, Marissa Levin, who is the CEO and founder of Information Experts. Mm -hmm. And uh, she has been, you know, she's been doing great things for us as well. Um, but I think our, you know, Jeremy and I have, you know, we, we very much look up to um, to Charles Best, who is uh, the CEO and founder of DonorsChoose.org, which is a website that we very much want to model after. Mm -hmm. And we try and adopt a lot of their principles that has been, you know, so successful over the last decade. Um, so, in terms of adult involvement, we've, we've definitely had our fair share of help, and you know, I, I, can't, I couldn't ask for greater advisors uh, th thus far, but I would say that a, a bulk of the work involved was, was Jeremy and I, and, and we, hope, we hope that we'll both be able to keep turning out um, hard work as we have been over the last year. Awesome. So, yeah, because we have to say that uh, at the end of the summer, college uh, will start for you both. And um, you think uh, you'll still have the time and, um, yeah, dedicate your, your work and, and put effort in, in gray matter? Well, actually, um, I'm only going to be a senior next year. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> But Jeremy will be, he'll be a freshman in uh, Columbia, mm -hmm. and because Columbia is in New York City, I, I mean, I know over our last conversations, he's shown nothing but, you know, um, an ardent interest in, in keep working with Gray Matter. I don't think that he'll let college get in the way of that. Um, I'm, I'm sure that he'll, he'll put uh, his hardest into, into both aspects of his life, but um, as, for, as for Gray Matter, I can't imagine that either of us will, will try and detract from it at all. Yeah, as it's such a beautiful project. So for the people in in the audience, um, I mean, we have um, a large audience in uh, in the U.S. or North America, but also on an international basis. And um, so once again, um, all the projects can be seen and are presented on your website, um, graymatterfdn.org. That is. And um, on the other hand, so for the donations, how does it work? The the pure right, process um, of uh, let's say I I found a particularly uh, interesting and uh, project that appeals to me, and uh, I want to donate a certain amount of money. Got it. Um, yeah. Well, like you said, first you just you'd click our projects page and you would browse through our our projects posted. And once you have found that project that you're particularly interested in, there is just a little green box at the top that says "Add to Cart." Um, you'll see on the left hand side it's very clear um, where your money is being spent um, and exactly how much of the whole project has been funded. Mm -hmm. And you'll see how much money up to you can donate up to because our cart will not you know will not allow you to donate more than you have to. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, for example, <clears throat> our one completed project right now on the website is uh, $85 complete of 112 mm -hmm. that, you know, needs to be uh, raised. 
And all and you know, so right now there's twenty seven more dollars needed and you would just add to cart up to twenty seven dollars and it, it is a very simple, you know, PayPal process um, that will that will lead you to the end. Um, right now adding to cart will lead you to in a, a third party page, um, you know, which is PayPal and you will and you'll pay there, um, just as you would on, on many other sites. But we're hoping in the next couple of weeks um, to integrate the you know the payment process on our website just to make mm. it more convenient for Great. for our donors. Yeah, and uh, we shouldn't forget to mention that you give a hundred percent of the money to to the schools and the individual projects. So um, you take uh, or you don't take um, any money for for yourself um, from the. Student side, uh, how do we have to imagine that? So, um, if maybe a student or let's say um, parents are listening to to you um, presenting Grey Matter, and um, how does this work? Uh, basically, um, coming to you with a project. Does it still need to be in New York City, or as you have the process of basically <laughs> hand hand picking um, the the projects, uh, could it be somewhere else in the states? Um, well, as of right now, we're we're really only looking in New York City. Um, mm -hmm. We are hand picking, but that's only to ensure integrity for now. Uh, we'll we'll try and uh, devoid that process as soon as we can. Actually, um, you know, in the back right now, we're kind of testing out. Um, uh, a little a little form that students could fill out in which they'd be able to enter their their name their their uh, you know what type of school they go to the subject that they're interested in and um, they'll kind of be able to just uh, you know anyone will be able to put it on our website except it will not be visible until either Jeremy or I or someone helping us mm -hmm. um, you know like Jake or like Safana um, you know us to four will we'll be yeah. trying mm -hmm. yes we'll we'll just be uh, approving them. Um, as for the the hundred percent donations, um, that's that's exactly what it is. Uh, we give, you know, we 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 want to inspire our donors to donate again, and that I think that's the the best way to do that is to show them how their money is being spent. And just like um, donor donors choose uses um, thank you letters and pictures, we we would like to do the same on all of our completed projects. You'll be able to see um, pictures of how. The, the donor money has, is being spent, and you'll see pictures of the students using their books. And for people who actually donated, uh, they will receive thank you letters handwritten by um, the students who have received help. And we will try to ensure 100% of a, of a successful um, you know, donor donee story. Great. Yeah, it is definitely um, an ex inspiring project, and um, I can only wish you um, continued success. And um, yeah, many more projects, uh, many more people who donate, uh, of course, as well. And um, well, we we shouldn't uh, forget to mention that. Uh, so we mentioned the website. Uh, however, you're also very active in social media, of course. Um, mm -hmm. Where could uh, aside from the website, where can keep people go and? Um, get further uh, information or get in touch with you? Sure. Um, well, first of all, I guess I, I, w I do use my Twitter. Um, so you could you can find me on Twitter, which is um, at ShotAula, um, or you can find Jeremy at JeremyGM. Um, and Grey Matter actually has a Twitter also, which is uh, at Grey Matter FDN. Mm -hmm. And we also use a Facebook. Um, how could we live without a Facebook? Uh, Facebook.com slash Grey Matter FDN. We try and stay constant with our name, so um, you'll be able to find us most anywhere. Yeah, good branding, definitely. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> um, Yasha, it was uh, a really a great pleasure um, learning about your, your project, and uh, thank you for educating me and your audience about it. And um, I think uh, it's a very valuable course, course and uh, wish you continued success with it. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Kristen.